in a world wrought with struggle and strife. A world rich with beauty and grandeur. A world where peril lies around every corner. A world of gasting and pony. One group steps up to share the perspective of the masses in this the world of Warcraft. We are Pokecast, the voice of the players. Back, you are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 43, and we are in patch 6.0.3. I am your warlock host, Bell. Unfortunately, I did bring the writers of Rohan with me, uh, and I'm really sad about it because, boy, are they a fun bunch tonight. Apparently, it's all jokes on Bell tonight, so that's the evening's going to consist of me being trolled. But I did bring the mage who has a sheep fetish, Fryza. Oh, it is so... I uh, find that uh, very true. I think I, I don't know what I would do if I couldn't sheep. I've, they've had transmogs now. You can make a porcupine and monkey. Mm. Got to have the sheep. Porcupine I get to hear hurt. the, huh? Porcupine might hurt. It's true. If you have, I, I believe it's your ambiance. If you have your ambiance at full blast, you always hear the meh the second you sheep somebody. <laughs> so it's pretty awesome. Not gonna lie. What was that again? That sound? Can you? Meh. <laughs> then you know you got it off. You're like, God, well, God. Well. <laughs> But the sheep uh, fetish should get it off of me. Come on. That's what... It goes both ways. Uh, uh, that's, yeah. that's disturbing. You take that any way you want it. Yeah. That's disturbing. Uh, I, we're glad you're here. I did also bring the Death Knight who spends too much time gripping like in. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Uh, you know, that was a rumor. A little birdie told me that you have a gripping problem, so... See, the sunglasses aren't just for show. They kind of hide my blindness that is coming every day, so... Mm. You know what they say about, you know, gripping. It'll make you go blind. I heard yeah, that. That's hair on the back of your hand, Pot, too. Potts knows more about it than I do, but you know, that was my intro, Hell. so I had to kind of... Right. Uh... <laughs> We're not going to judge. Uh, we're all men here, uh, except for myself, although that's arguable, I guess, in some cases. Uh, I did also bring the kitty who got arrested for licking himself in public hots for shots. <laughs> that was... Now, I didn't really state where, so I left that open to the imagination. Uh, but in my imagination, you got arrested for public indecency, so... <laughs> I mean, no. Apparently you just can't show your tail in public, you know, it's just it's frowned, illegal. It's frowned upon in certain cultures. It's very frowned upon. <laughs> For those that have tails, I, I have no tails, so... <laughs> I can't even deal with <laughs> I can't even deal with what's going on right now. These guys are very, very mature. Uh, so... We do have quite a bit of news, but before we get into the news, let's talk about what we did in our weekend. Wow, Fraser, what'd you do this week? Um, I forced myself to do the Coliseum. Again, uh, you did? You didn't ask I, me. Either. I know. Well, I do it weird times. I'm up to like 70 kills now, up to the 100. And it's. I found out a few, a few tricks. If the Death Knight is in there and he uses his ghouls or his army, each kill counts as a kill. Each one that dies counts as a kill. So if really? you have a couple Death Knights, it's not that hard to get 100 kills if you get enough Death Knights in there to pop their army of the dead, and all you got to do is tag them. And eventually you'll get 100 kills pretty quickly if there's enough Death Knights that pop that. Is that real? Like that? <clears throat> yeah, it works. Killing got, each of their kills? Their ghouls does yeah. something? I said ghouls. I got, I got 17 kills in one match because of wow. that. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, so... I found out some neat tricks in there. It's still, still the worst place to be. I mean, yeah, there's not much good to say about that. But I guess I have, if, now that I'm trying to do it, it is possible to get 100 kills a week. Uh, if you actually try and hate yourself enough, you can definitely do it. Uh, so I've, I haven't been in there since that first week. I love myself. Yeah. Though. If you love yourself, don't go in there because you know hate yourself or wondering why you want to go back. But no. I, I, I just, for, I'm just, I'm just going because I want to see what that bag that they have after 100 wins. I want to see if it carries anything in there. If it drops one PVP uh, epic piece, then I'll be happy. I'll, I'll have faith in the system. But if it doesn't, then it's just another thing that's going to be that's going to disappoint me. Kind of laugh if you uh, get did you do any raids? You didn't bugs. do any raids this week, did you? No, I didn't do any raids. No, uh, me and CJ or uh, we always change his name, Ace yeah. Lt, whatever his name is these days. We uh, trying to we just talk all night on the on the Skype call, trying to figure out new ideas for our, our arena teams and and what's going to happen with RBGs. Mm-hmm. And, 
Speaking of that, we did bring you two new members. Some people did hear your plea. Uh, there's actually several new members, and uh, some of them brought their mains, some of them brought alts, and then plan on bringing their mains. So I don't have all the names, but you guys know who you are. Uh, Pixie is one of them. Zarth is one of them. There's quite a few that have brought tunes over specifically because this one was being a crybaby on last week's episode. And... <laughs> Uh, his QQing did bring uh, his milkshake did bring all the boys to the yard because now people are coming to Argent Dawn. Uh, so we did get two resto druids courtesy of his plea, and we got a priest and a, and a couple other people. So those of you that joined and, and brought tunes over to the Writers of Rohan, we thank you for awesome. that. Awesome. Yeah, he's we're gonna, gonna get those. Better. We're gonna get it going, guys. We are, we are gonna get those RBGs going. The enough people that we have enough now. There's no reason why we can't get started. Uh, um, like, and what did you do this week? I mean, I know what you did because you just pet battled, but anything besides pet battling? <laughs> okay, uh, I can't even talk about my pet battling. That awesome journey that I had to go through and to pet battle every single one of those trainers, including the Celestial Tournament, Dark Moon Fair, and I finally got my pet trunks, which is just nothing but a small little elephant that looks like the one I already had. Aww. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you so actually do after... anything now? Oh, oh, this one can battle. It's just, at least it's not like the like, plushie that just kind of sits there and you can give it a hug every once in a while. Yeah. But that's pretty much all this stupid little pet did, and it gave me a little, little tiny little uh, pet. Have you seen the new videos of Humor Red? His new PvP pet battles? No. Yeah, this came out with two of them last week. I watched them. I don't pet battle or anything like that, but I was like, man, this is awesome. So <laughs> uh, he's been doing that lately. It's actually pretty fun watching him. Uh, uh, definitely give that guy a shout out. He has two videos about pet. Oh, uh, Huma 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 Red X, right? Yeah, yeah, he's got great yeah. videos. I, yeah. for those of you listening and watching, you guys have never had the pleasure of being on Skype with these three during their various things. We've got Fryza who does his PvP. We have Lycan who does his pet battles, and we have Hots who does his e very, very, very hardcore rating. When you're on Skype with these guys and they're doing the things that they love, boy, does the Tourette's happen. And it's literally <laughs> 0 to 60 in like 2.5. The curse words, the slamming of things. I mean, it's pretty pretty epic. So, what, what was the one I made this week? Uh, get you and your effing squirrels out of here or something like that? I, I was like, or, wait, yeah. what am I doing with my squirrels? And he's like, no, not you. And I'm like, oh, okay, because I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm just minding my own business. I, there's no squirrels here. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Hots, what did you do this week? I, of course, progressed. Uh, my guild's now 8 out of 10 heroic Black Rock Foundry. Um, hit 681 item level. Did you want a golf clap? I mean, what? Is no, that I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not pandering to him. I'm, I'm, <laughs> just, uh, I'm just saying what I did. And then um, our guild's been having a really, really rough time because we haven't been able to find a fifth healer that wants to stick around. We're either too hardcore or not hardcore enough. I don't know. That kind of blew my mind a little bit. Gotta um, have that happy medium. Like, we wiped twice on a progression boss, and it was uh, the Blast Furnace. I think Bell was there while I was streaming that, and there's... I can't not... confirm or deny whether or not I was trolling you on your stream or not. I <laughs> might have been. Yeah. Uh... But either way, there's like a hundred things going on, and he... Of course, it's going to take a little bit to get to it, Um, and... The dude was like, I can't do this. I'm sorry. And he wouldn't join the guild with worse progression because we weren't fun. And I was like, dude. But maybe he that's, just, it's, he it's probably the same guy on the highway who can't figure out what lane he should be in. And he's going back and forth, back and forth. and ends up in the same spot at the same time. And he almost killed himself and killed everybody around him multiple that times. Dude, you know, when yeah. the speed limit's 70, he's the one doing, like, 78. Not really speeding, speeding, but, you know, not... <laughs> Super slow. Yeah. Too fast yeah. for everybody else, you, you but yet it's the same place. You progressed. Same That's time. awesome, though. Yeah, I was That's really happy. Uh, we um, but... didn't, but... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I, I get to roll a shaman now. Um, I'm, I'm going to be shamaning for a little bit. A Healing, shaman? Like, a shammy? Yeah, yeah, I get to look at Aja oh. and huge book and be like, teach me the ways. <laughs> <laughs> Aja's definitely going to be able to give you a lot of good inside of Shaman Heals. I've seen a lot of Shaman Healers in my day. Aja uh, will pat geez. you on the head. Well, geez. you should have had a lot, lot of friends from last week's show. So, you know, if those friends pull through, one or two of them may be a Shaman. <laughs> that was know? kind of a dirty pull. Uh, my, my Week in WoW consisted of logging on, doing my garrison stuff, dealing with guild things. I didn't really do a whole lot of fun this week. The main reason I didn't do a whole lot of fun, for those of you that 
already know, we did launch the Pwncast dailyquest.com. That was launched last week. We've It's been amazing. The people that have been on the site, the feed that, feedback that we've gotten, it's literally been amazing. I have never, ever seen a website get as much traffic as it's been getting the last few days. And the whole team at Pwncast, we've we've got other uh, other people in the community like Lyra and Phoenix and Midas Man. Um, and Elida is going to be writing as well, which is pretty exciting because that's stuff he could do on his on his downtime at work so he can fit that in, which we're pretty excited. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check out the website, make sure you bookmark it because it's pretty awesome. But other than that, I didn't do a whole lot in WoW. We did. We are going through Heroic High Mall in tandem. We're also doing normal Black Rock Foundry. I didn't want to do Foundry. It was against my will uh, because I think we should finish Heroic first, but we have a happy medium. We're going to do one on Friday and, and one on Sunday. It's fun. It's been really good. We've gotten a lot of new additions to the to the team for the main progression, and we're moving forward, which is pretty nice. We did wipe on Heroic Butcher at, like, 4%. Gosh, was that so sad. So sad. I just saw it go right before my eyes. I'm like, no, wait. Come back. But we did have some help. Uh, Forgotten Profits there on Skull Crusher. Our friend David brought in some of his guildies, which was really nice. Vine was one of them. Uh, I don't know. I can't pronounce his tune name, but Poozy. We had the distinct pleasure of spending four hours in team speaking. Boy, is he a freaking riot. Uh, he's from New Jersey and all that that goes along with it. He's a movie buff in, yeah, where there was some debates happening. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I did this week. So let's get right into the news. PTR released huge all this, yay, happy crap. So we have some stuff that I've summarized for us to go through, and then we're going to go through some of the highlights of the patch notes. The the death recap screen, this isn't something that's new because I believe Elvine was the first one to actually post a picture of it before Wowhead picked it up and before it was actually data mined. Uh, I didn't comment or bring this on the show because it was just a picture that Elvine had. I was waiting for some kind of data mining so that I could have confirmation before I brought this to you guys. But... Um, the, uh, the screen actually gives you a death recap, which is pretty uh -huh. nice. <sighs> I don't really know if I want to see that every time I die. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about that, but you do get a nice little death recap. It, <sighs> I don't know. I, I personally like it as a tank, you know, as a tank and raid lead, it will help me out a lot to find out, you know, why why something went wrong, whether it was, you know, something stupid that I'm doing, whether it's a healing issue. You know, I, I kind of like the idea. Yeah. I just, there's just, there's enough add-ons out there, though, that'll tell you already what to do, what it needs to do. And I understand Blizzard does that, where they see something great happening on an add-on, they pull it over to themselves. Well, I think, too, a lot of people don't use add-ons, which I, I think that that's a lot of the reason why Blizzard has started picking up a lot of these things uh, to integrate the already made you know, the developer add-ons that people in the community are doing, I think that a large part of that is to help the people that don't... I mean, there's people that literally refuse add-ons. It doesn't matter if that add-on is going to dramatically increase your gameplay. They just don't... Um, Aja has Deadly Boss Mod, and I think that's the only add-on she has. There's quite a few people that I know that just don't use the add-ons. So, I mean, I totally understand where they're coming from. I... I don't really know if I want a constant reminder of why I sucked because I died. That, <laughs> that might not be something that's interesting to me. Um... But basically, I think, oh. the screen that pops up, um, it it shows all the information about when you were killed. Your the kill shot. I mean, it gives you all that information. So it is more. It is better. I don't know how that's going to look in an arena standpoint. Fraser, you'll have to give me your. I think that would be awesome. No, because they, then you would have they, a way to just say, "See, Bell, this is what you should have done." Yes, the screen is telling. Yes. No. Let them rage quit out of your team. <laughs> <laughs> they suck. That's what I'm talking about. If they in Call of Duty and in a couple other games, the you can watch at the the last person who dies in a game. You can actually watch the replay of that person being killed. And I think I don't know how they would do it in threes. I like to see how they do it in twos. It'll be easier because they'll have to kill both people and both of them usually die right back to back. But in threes, they could probably do it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they would do it, but it would be cool to be able to watch that last person flop over and die, and then everybody can watch that last little 10 seconds before that person dies. That will be super cool, I think. I agree with that. I think. I don't know how they would work it out. I don't really know how that would work because not everybody quits right after someone dies in threes. I don't know how that would work. Yeah, but, well, 
if you're you, thankfully you don't work for Blizzard because if you had to, we would pretty much be screwed. Uh, because yeah, you're like, guys, you come to the team meeting on how they're going to fix it. Guys, I just don't know how we're going to do this. Here's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know, know how it's, it's going to work. work. Uh, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's another thing. We've been talking about this Twitter thing. Every week it seems like there's some additions. So they did post beautiful screenshots of some of the capabilities that Twitter's going to have. And i got to tell you, I fancy it. When you get an achievement, there's going to be a little W. And that W is going to pop up next to that achievement. And assuming you pre-set up your Twitter account in the new social tab that's going to be in your interface menu, you could click that and it'll. you can edit what you want to say about that and you could tweet it out to the masses. You can be standing in a zone and take a screenshot and you can crop it and put your own title to it and send that out into the Twitter world. I think that's... I'm hoping that they'll integrate Facebook because I'm more of a Facebooker than I am a Twitter. But I think that's pretty awesome because... Because, once again, we've talked about this. PlayStation Network does it. Xbox does it where you could post your trophies and all that other crap. I don't, I'm not a console gamer, but uh, my husband's played and I've seen on his feed where he gets trophies or when he was doing some weird stuff on Call of Duty where he had to get prestige or whatever. It would always pop up when he hit another tier. So I think that's pretty Even cool. Even Facebook does it. Whenever the people are playing Facebook games yeah. and they get uh-huh. something, they're like, I got this in this game. And I'm like... Yeah, I hide that because here's what happens. <laughs> I often do that during the day because I work from home, and I often do that when I'm supposed to be working and I'm just taking a quick break, and then it's like, so-and-so got an extra level on Clash of Clans, and I'm like, damn it, because I totally wasn't doing anything. Uh, Boss walks by your office like, mm-hmm. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on here? So that's pretty awesome with the Twitter, the, the Twitter, the Twitter integration. The Argy Pet. Space Goat, awesome. 1.9 million was raised for the Red Cross. For That's Ebola, of course, because Ebola serious. Uh, and but, this is within a less than one month. Yeah. Though. 27 days, we put 1.9. And I wrote the article on a, I think it's called PwncastDailyQuest.com. It's a great I, website. I have to call out Blizzard a little bit because they're using that as how great us as a community are. Now, we're awesome. Please don't get me wrong. However, people didn't just send Blizzard money for Red Cross. People bought something that they wanted to buy, and they got something from it. So Blizzard was smart in how they raised their money. So, yes, the community as a whole, are we awesome because we supported Red Cross? Yes, we are. Was that the deciding factor on why we purchased the Argy Pet? Probably not. There's probably a 50-50 split down the middle that was like, I just have to have that pet. I don't really care where the money goes. <laughs> but I do think it's great that Blizzard did that, and I'm going to shout out Blizzard for that because they do think it's awesome. Uh, I I want to think that there's better things that they could have donated to besides Ebola, but what the hell ever. Like, I'm just here. Ebola's pretty serious. Uh, Fryza gives me Ebola every week. So, if you, That's true. Blizzard, if you could send some money my way for some Ebola treatment, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <That's right. laughs> See, That's what Ebola sounds Ox like, I think. is so frozen with his Ebola virus because you gave him Ebola last week that he can't even yeah. deal with his life right now. I'm just like, oh my god. No, I mean, it's it's awesome, um, and in a way, people bought something digital. Like you know, it's yeah, true. It's easy. Yeah, it's something easy. It's something Blizzard only had to spend maybe two days working on. Paid someone like agreed. I maybe think... a total of forty bucks. So <laughs> yeah. you know, the design. You say they just and toss then, some, right. some bum on the street and just toss some forty bucks in here. Draw me, draw me. Yeah. Coat. Well, I mean, hey. you know, like. Obviously, they're the guy who hey, designs them. They do right? have Ashran, and I believe that that's where that came from. The bum on the street. <laughs> that's all interns. The bum on we the street came guys. in, and he came in with his 40 and was like, hey, I'm ready to work. And Ashran <laughs> is what came of that. So, I mean. You start typing on the computer, <laughs> making a PDP that's area. That's what happened. Uh, but whether or not we. Impresses me with their donations, um, but it doesn't surprise me anymore. But coming out, even though, even though something digital was purchased, I mean, everybody knew that this because I mean, you you couldn't go anywhere on the Blizzard site without without one seeing the Argy, two seeing the you know help the Red Cross fight Ebola type thing. It was everywhere. So people who bought the Argy knew exactly where the money was right. going to. So that might have helped influence, right? Right. And it's hundred percent, right? It's hundred percent. Went right to them. That's awesome. How can you fight against that? That is great. And even when they when they packaged it, I believe with another with one of the mounts, they still said that okay, you that's awesome. 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 That's awes
I would love to see them do this like once every three months. Agreed. You know, yeah. th- I would buy a pet once every three months if I knew that money would go to help charity. You know, and it would drive me to buy. I mean, I'm, I'm going to buy them anyway. I was going to say, let, me, <laughs> but, let me not be a liar and, a, and let me not be, oh, hey, I'm almighty. I would buy it anyway, but in some cases that would almost, if people that maybe aren't into that would buy it just to support the cause right. and they get a nice cool pet thing. But for the love yeah. of God, can you please make things giftable? How are we as a mm-hmm. team supposed to give away stuff on our website and our Facebook page if you can't make anything giftable? I mean, that just sucks. I think they should. What website, though? <laughs> the Pwncast Daily Quest dot com. I think <laughs> I, everybody. Everybody last episode was like, seriously, how many times did you say it? As many times as needed, my friend. Um, <laughs> challenge modes. The daily challenge mode quest in Warlords of Draenor currently awards an uh, a six an eye level six forty epic. I've never done any of the daily challenge mode quest, so I don't know anything about that. Hot that would be your department. But in patch six point one, they're actually going to start rewarding with eye level six sixty instead. I'm assuming that's amazing, right? Yeah, that's 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 really good. Um, it kind of irks me because because um, you guys do them religiously. Too <laughs> user for yeah. the raids. Like any like the highest gear you could get was from that box, and I spent two weeks every single day, um, working that out. Um, we spent seven hours in one trying to wow. just finish it, just finish it. Um. And it, it was up a Black Rock Spire. It was brand new. We didn't have the best gear. The the thing about that thing is, though, you don't have to do it in time. Like, you don't have to get gold, bronze, or silver, or anything like it's that. Just you just have ticket. to finish it. Yeah. You just have to finish it before the next reset. Um, so, But, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, it's, it's a good catch-up mechanic because, you know, if you're going to have someone who, in, instead of just going to the freaking, uh, the owl, or not the owl, what was it? Um, Timeless Isle. So they're just going out there and killing, you know, random things and getting right. gear that's, you know, better than most raid gear. Why, you know, and that's just off of luck. Why not use or give someone who has skill a 100% way of at least getting one thing, you know? True. I so, got to watch uh, cartoons. You guys know who cartoons, I think, Hots does. And, uh, uh, he had a stream, and uh, it's funny because he, he's a little he's a celebrity, so he's able to poke his nose into other people's teams, and he's PvP, but he wanted to do PvE. So he went and found the best people in the world that do challenges, and he asked them with this little, he's like, oh, hey, guys, can I join you for some challenges? And I'm cartoons. So they let him in, and they carried him. They did every challenge mode in probably... Just you can watch it all done. I got to watch him do it, and the skill level is so intense of these people, mm-hmm. and they completed everyone. No one ever died. They did everything probably in an hour and a half. All the challenges, and he's like, "All right, I got my challenges. They're they're all gold." He's like, "It wasn't that hard at all." And I'm like, "I'm sitting there. Like, you went with the best people in the world. What are you talking about?" Man? Yeah, like, when you say celebrity, you mean wow liberty because let's be real, wow, he's liberty. not making yeah. millions of dollars and he's not no. he's not Brad. But he's so he's he's phenomenal. He's wow famous. At, he's right. Oh well, yeah. Um so that's good with the challenge modes. I don't really partake in those because last time I tried it was a horrible failure. I so was, we don't do that. I was super jelly. I'll tell you that right now. That was cool to watch, I'm not gonna lie. Um there's a whole section on graphical the graphical changes that they have made for uh, heightened graphics. They're changing some of the lighting, doing some of the backdrop shading, <clears throat> really cleaning it up. I was going to go a little bit in depth with it, but uh, we've. I want to make sure that we don't run over on time. Uh, make sure that you guys go. We'll have it on our website tonight, um, but you can also go to worldofwarcraft.com and you can see it. They have screenshots. They explain really what it means. Most people aren't really going to understand what the hell it means. Just know that what they're doing is going to make it look better, assuming you have the computer that meets their minimum requirements, which is the disclaimer that they put. Assuming you have that minimum requirement with the graphic card and all that stuff, uh, they should give you a nice breakdown of the differences between not having certain the certain things that they've implemented. So make sure that you guys go check that out. The last important item uh, on the news, which there isn't an important item on the news because we've do we already talk about that oh no we didn't talk about it okay the last uh, item on the news is somebody on 
the forums had asked, uh, is it Bashiok? Bashoki? Bashiok. Bashiok. Okay. I just call him Bash because, so you know, we're close personal friends and he tweets me. Right. Uh, actually, I, he doesn't even know I exist, but that's okay. Somebody had asked, well, what's the point of heroic dungeons once I'm overgeared? Tell me what the point is. Let's say I play a main and I don't ever have an alt. So once I'm past that, I'm in heroic high mall, I'm in mythic whatever, what's the point of me ever stepping back into a heroic dungeon? Give me what my, what, what's the importance of, of doing that? Well, he, the community manager, went on the forum, and his response is basically in 6.1 what they're going to be introducing is they're going to be introducing daily quests um, that are going to have a set number of tasks in your garrison. Most people's garrisons are going to have a different subset of tasks. Some are going to be towards professions, raids, treasure hunts. Uh, some are going to be dungeon specific. The cool thing about this is it sends you into the dungeon. It gets that. You get, um, you get great loot from it, but if you want to do these with party members, meaning you don't just want to do them solo because you want to have friends, all you have to do is go to that, your, whoever the leader's garrison is, and you can pick up that quest from your leader's garrison instead of picking it up from yours if you guys have two different sets of quests. So that way you can all be on the same quest, you can all do the same thing. I don't really know if this is going to give people a reason to go back into a heroic dungeon. You better be giving me something really, really fancy to make me go back into some heroic horse shit. I I, I would ask I would have asked the question back to Bash. I would have said, "You like going into heroic dungeons?" That would be my question. Well, he I mean he had a good point. He just said, "You know, once I'm over geared, I don't understand what the it's, what's it the point." It sounds like he wants to go to heroic. Dungeons. Like he likes to be in there. And maybe he just wants know. some kind of incentive. Well, I think he's saying, "What's my incentive for going? What am I?" There's none. Out there? Once you're done with it, you're done I'm with it. You don't geared, have to go back. I'm getting geared to DE, but maybe he maybe. No one's telling you to go back. Well, and that's yeah. kind I wouldn't of go back. Said. Just leave it alone. Yeah, there was. But a, if you look at if you look at Mop and Cataclysm, I mean, we had a reason to go in there. We had to get our conquest, our Valor points. True. You know, we had to do our daily Valor points. I point think that was this guy's point. He was wondering, you know, it's changed so much to where once I haven't entered a heroic dungeon in probably two months. Right. I mean, I. But we don't want to go back to that. We don't want to go back to the Valor justice system. I'm good. Are no, you serious? I'm, it's gone. We don't give want us that back. Reason, though. Give us another we reason. We don't like, want to go. Have, I have the inn in my garrison. I have the level three inn, and I get my daily quest I can get from there. But I've gotten all the toys that I can get out of there. I've gotten all the, I mean, and I'll tell you right now, for 30 gold, it's not worth for me to spend 20 minutes to 30 minutes of teaching, I'm sorry, but normally idiots on how to run this and not wiping us. Exactly. You know, and going through it just for a bag for 30 gold. And I That's really have gotten nothing decent out of it. So, yeah, I have no intention of going back in it. Now, if they're going to start throwing some 655 gear at me, maybe. Make it worth my while. Yeah, that be a chance. Right. Give me, I have a couple of 640 pieces that need to replace. But <laughs> and, still, and, if you have alts, though, you I'm know, if they're going to start giving one. me 655 gear for my alts, yeah, I'm definitely stepping in it. Well, That'd be a nice DE, I tell you that. And the, he's been really tight-lipped about, I mean, there hasn't been any, this is what you're going to get. So <clears throat> I'm assuming that the only reason he even said something about that is just to let people know that they are working on it. That's pretty much the bulk of the news. Anything else you need to know, you can go to pwncastdailyquest.com and you could get the rest of the news uh, for what's going on. We do it all throughout the week. Uh, I do have a small bell, Bell's Bites segment. I, in trolling the forums, which I do every week pretty religiously because I do get uh, a lot of my topics on what people are having concerns about and what the community is talking about for my Bell's Bites to keep you guys in the know. Somebody, this was hilarious to me, literally hilarious to me. Somebody had posted on the forums, uh, it's not fair that I, I pay monthly like everyone else. I should be entitled to get into open raids. And when he's saying open raids, he means the pre-made groups without being denied by someone who probably doesn't even know the fights as I do anyhow. Now this brings up a this brings up a topic and oh this Oh my listen, goodness. This sparked oh uh, my. it's Bashiok, right? The CM. Uh -huh. This sparked his response and I loved his response and I wanted to make sure that I stated this response. He says, well, to flip it around, it's not fair that I'm forced to invite people to my group that I don't want. Bam. Because that <laughs> is that. Bam. When I read that I literally busted out laughing. He 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 makes a good point. There's he's got a whole blue post. I'm actually going to write an article about it. But he makes a good point. I get what you guys are saying. For those of you that are like, "Why well, always get denied?" I understand. A lot of you say, "Well, they're overgeared and they're trying to get, or they're undergeared, so they're trying to get carried." That's their prerogative. If you don't like it, you be the group leader. You start the pre-made. You you do all that if you have an issue with that. This is the nature of the beast. If you if we're doing a heroic high mall run as as a pug, which we don't ever do. Right. But I'm not going to pull in somebody that's 635 item level and be like, yeah, you're totally cool because 
let's be cool. Like, that's the nature of the beast is the pre-made finder was built to get shit done. And, I mean, I know it sucks, but if you hate it and you're not getting what you need, make your own. It doesn't matter if you don't know the fight. It doesn't matter. Educate yourself. Know the fight. And be. you don't have to necessarily be leader. Once somebody gets in there and says, yeah, I know all the fights, you can make them leader. You really, we did it all in, in... at the end of Mists of Pandaria for Siege of Orgrimmar. I was leader when it was back when it was open raid. I didn't know shit about anything. I pulled a bunch if, of people that yeah. did and was like, here, you're the boss. I just bought the people so that I could and, get what I needed. And how many if times you want, back, yeah. how ahead, many times back in did we actually turn around and say, you know what? No, we're not carrying them for a piece of gear. And we were taking tanks and heels and DPS that were geared for mythic uh, Siege of Orgrimmar. We did. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're sitting there going, you know, these people, should, ah, you know, we'll take them anyway. And and taking those low those low level geared people and say, sorry, they're just not coming because we did not want to carry anybody. And it was our choice. That that's our yeah. rate. It's, it's a very us. social game. It's a very mm-hmm. social game. And if you're not going to get into the into a group, a guild, a group of, of ten people or whatever, if you're not going to put yourself in that group, you don't have to quit the game. But know that you're you're not going to ever be able to get into a, a high a high you know group where you're going to get big you know mythic and heroic because those guys who are up there, they're in that. Group. They know each other. Yeah. They they've been with each other for years, and every game is different. Halo, Call of Duty, all these games are different than this game. Some games you don't have to be sociable it's, and be great. And, and this game you kind of have to be sociable if you want to great have great gear, have friends. It's not what you know; it's who you and, know. And even if you and don't, it, the pre mates. Here's the thing: he's the community manager's right. If I'm the leader of the open raid, it is my right. It is my prerogative to deny no. you. However. It's also my prerogative to approve you. I don't call you up on the phone and say, hey, guy, you denied me for your pre-made. Let's fight about yeah. it. Because it's life. It, it, it's it's mind-boggling with that. that I can't get over it's that. It's like being picked last for the, for the baseball team. When you're picked last for the baseball team, it sucks. But guess what? It happens. Deal with it. What does Hotspot say about this? I have a few things to say this. I'll keep it short because I know we're pushing Well, yeah, because you're in but... my segment now. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. No, okay. Well, uh, don't, put, don't put up with so, it, man. So, one, I'm 681. I've been denied for shit. Like, people are like, no, I don't want you because we don't want to carry. we don't you want are, you to carry. That's why you're denied. Yeah. Well, that too. Um, two, <laughs> I, if I come in and, like, if, say what y'all are doing, you know, like, you want really geared people to carry you. If I don't know that before going into this, I'm probably going to be like, I'm out. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, like, you know. It's not like people are, and I had someone whispering me the other day, like, I can't get in a group because my, like, with any of my alts because I can't get geared. I'm like, dude, like, getting gear is not hard. You just, it's, what, what is yeah. your main to? I'm, I'm tired, well, I'm tired of tanking. Well, talk with your guild, you know? Yeah, like, right. it, it, I can't help you. I can't carry you. Um, you right. know, like, I come to y'all's raid because I go there to have fun. I'm there having fun, and, well... We, we, uh, but we, we <laughs> actually, you're not even the one carrying us anymore. Our own team is no, carrying us, which is awesome. I, I had uh, to take a break. I mean, I had to take a break. My, D- Black Rock Foundry. my DPS was vastly improved for Friday's raid. I just want to point that out there. What, what? Destruction Warlock. <laughs> yeah, like I was amazed. I was very, very proud of myself because it was amazing. But this is just the. the this, this is it. Kid. This kid used to play baseball, where not just the winning team got the trophies, but everybody got a trophy. Oh, he it's one of those. Suck, yep, he needs to suck yep, it up, yep. and if he doesn't like it, do it yourself. Stop crying. Yeah. It, seriously. If he's complaining about that, he should try PvP. You'll get humbled real quick. <laughs> you pay 15 bucks a month to get your to get your pride taken away and your dignity. <laughs> he come back and talk to me then. Uh. I'll tell you that. Pre-made group. <laughs> this is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll move on to the other things I have for Bell's Bites. Pre-made groups, that's – it's a right to work, pre-made group. It's our right to not let you work. So uh, – and, and I'm not saying this. I don't do pre-mades. This is one of the reasons I don't do pre-mades because I don't like dealing with people. Rating is personal, and rating is emotional for a lot of people. You should play with the same people because there's a heightened sense of pissed the fuck off when you're rating. Yeah. And only people that you know on that level can you really can like and scream at me because I didn't do what I was supposed to be doing and me not get offended or 
for a moment of offense and then the second the raid's over. Really, raiding should be done with a group of people that you do pretty consistently because you get to yeah. know each other's quirks and qualms. Same thing with arenas. Anything you do that's in a group setting and it's serious progression-wise, you really, really want to do it with the same people. If you don't oh, have yeah. a guild that's raiding, go find a guild that's raiding. If you don't have a guild that's raiding, come to Argent Dawn. You can come raid with us, seriously. But just find a guild that's raiding. Quit dealing with the pre-made group bullshit. And, and you're going to have to show up. You're going to have yeah, to show you up. You can't mark. just I, – I can picture I can picture a bunch of people outside of a gate, and there's a big gate there, and they're protesting with their signs, with their green armor falling off their shoulders, you know, and they're all beat up because they, no, they have no money for gold uh, to, 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 to repair. And they're sitting there, let us in your group, let us in your group, and it's like – you don't. You're not even wearing pants, man. Like, right. how am I supposed to let and you in? And then you ask him. You say, "Okay, I feel sorry for you. I'll let you in my group. We have raids on Thursday and Friday. Oh, I can't show up. Well, I can't help you, well, man. And let me I don't play know what devil's advocate. You. I know there's a lot of you out there that can't raid on certain days because you work a lot. You have children. There might be a lot of factors. This I understand, yeah. and I don't want you to take this the wrong way and think that this is a knock on you. If you have you that have kind quit. of problem. No. If, if group finder is really that much of an issue for you, talk to your guild and say, hey, can you guys accommodate me? Because I have guildies that come up to me every week and say, can you accommodate me for a second raid team? And we've actually started doing that. We ran raids all this week for Normal High Mall, specifically for the people who right. have children. They have jobs. They have these things. Talk to your guild. Talk to the raid yeah. leader of your guild and see if they're okay. What we did is we had some of our main progression raiders that are pretty well geared carrying these guys that don't get the gear normally. Talk to your guild. If if your guild isn't raiding, I hate to say this, but you might want to consider you might want to consider another guild that's doing that. Mm -hmm. you, these are things that you're going to have to make a choice on what's important to you. If gear is really not that serious and it's a take it as you can get it, then you're just going to have to keep dealing with the group, the pre-made group stuff. Good rule of thumb, though, is you should whisper them. Whisper who the leader is and just say, hey, I want to let you know that I know this, this, and this. This is actually valid because when... We were doing Siege of Orgamar and we were doing open raid and my my brother would deny somebody, they would whisper him and say, Hey, I might not be this geared for item level, but I know and he proceeded to state exactly what he knew about the fight. Guess what? We pulled him in regardless of his regardless of his item level and we carried him he knew. because he knew. You're right. This guy had said, you know, my I might be a little bit off on the eye level points, but my skills there, I know these things. So yes, you are there's a there's a high and a low and there's a there's a middle in between. You can always whisper the leader of the pre make group right. and just tell them what your skill set is. If that doesn't work, unfortunately you're gonna have to right. try to decide the best way for you to get gear. In light of that I've talked about this so many times with pre made groups and I don't know how to be any more clear. There's been a huge explosion over the interwebs. I've seen it. Bloke was actually the one that brought it to my attention this evening for Bell's Bites, but I was already going to talk about it because I already knew. Huge influx of ninjas. I see it all over the Facebook groups. <sighs> Guys, common sense is not that common, and I need the people that are having problems getting ninjas ninja looted on them when they're in a pre-made. Please, I need you to just pull all the smarts you can and just listen to my advice. When you are in a pre-made, the first question you better ask yourself is, I need to look at what the loot is set at. If the loot is not set on what you want it to be, you need to ask the leader before you pull, <laughs> before you pull, hey, can you please change it? If they don't change it, guess what you do? You get out uh -oh. of that group, really. You're wasting your time. Master loot, master loot is horrible in a pre-made situation where you can't trust people because even on master loot you cannot trust people because they will change that they will ninja and log out there are so many things that happen when it comes to master loot i have stated this since the beginning of time even in open raid if it's not on personal loot or if it's not on a loot situation that i know who's in control and can trust don't do it I get it. Master loot's better because there's more gear. But at the end of the day, is it really worth your peace of mind to kill somebody and then no. have somebody ninja all your damn loot? That shit no sucks. Way. All right, hold on. And in, in that state, in that statement, more gear drops. What are your chances of getting that? Agreed. Because it's going to get heavier between everyone else. Agreed. Uh, you know, your gear might not even drop. I think. So, I think in a pre-made, your general rule of thumb needs to be personal loot, and I think you need to make sure you watch your loot window because they do change that. As soon as they're out of combat, they do change it. So you need to make sure that you. I would. My recommendation. This is just mine. I. I don't know everything, but I would never do a pre-made group if it was not on personal loot. This is a way to combat you having to deal with these issues. So instead of crying about how you got ninja looted last week and you got ninja looted this week, 
First time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. Seriously, be a little bit smarter about it and realize that you can't take everybody at face value. Although we are a great community as a whole, there are those people that simply don't give a shit. They care about themselves. They're going to use anybody they can to step on to get the gear that they need, and they're going to kick oh, everybody yeah. out. This is the nature of World of Warcraft. This is the nature of being a gamer. So, Oh, yeah. The stories of the guild masters who have screwed over everybody in their guild. Oh, yeah. General it's rule, when you enter a pre-made, you always need to look at the loot type. Don't ask what the loot type is. Look yourself and see what it is. If it's not on personal, you wait until you, you ask them to put it on personal. If they don't before the pull, you don't do anything. You get the hell out of there. Seriously, that's what you need to do. Um, auto milling, guys. Auto milling macros. Cannot wait. Right now, it's illegal. It's against the terms right. and conditions. Please, for the love of Treesus, do not get caught <laughs> using auto milling macros. I cannot stress this enough. If you get caught using an auto milling macro, seriously, can, is that what you want to tell your friends? You got banned because you were auto milling? Come on. That's not even glorious. It isn't like you did anything amazing. So, right. just don't. Like the milling at macros that are out there, like the actual ones where you get to click every time, <clears throat> make it a, all you got to do is slash cast or slash use milling. And then slash use, and you actually pick the name of the flower. And as long as you have them all stacked up, you can sit there and click on it. I sit there and click on it. One just Sons of Anarchy on the other screen. It just it gets me. Just through my make time. sure when you're doing your macros, you're Come doing on. what's okay in the terms of service. <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to jeopardize your account oh, for the sake man. of milling because that's like going to prison for stealing CDs from Walmart. You don't ever want to tell the guy babies. next to you that you're in the joint for stealing CDs. You want to tell the guy next to you that you murdered somebody so that you're tough. Nobody ever wants to do right. that. So just. If you're going to go ham and you're going to break terms of service, make sure you do it all the way. Don't do it in the small things because the auto milling just – hopefully I've been posting on the forums about it quite frequently because the milling does annoy me to no end. It really frustrates me that I have to click, click. I don't do that. I didn't even bother setting up any kind of macros. Um, and to be honest, they addressed that at BlizzCon. They're looking to change <laughs> that anyway, so just be patient. The last thing for that I had for Bell's Bite, so <laughs> – uh, People are reporting that Crowman in Slag Mines is bugged. If you clear up to the bridge boss before talking to him. So if you've already cleared that before you've talked to him, that it's it's a possibility that you might be in the one that's bugged. Um, unfortunately, Huge Bloke did fall for this last night, which is actually where I got this from. Uh, <laughs> um, he did fall. He did fall for that. That's actually not a fact. Um, Clear the bridge boss, go talk to Crowman, and then make sure that you have uh, him to the second area for where the boss is to get a sword. So don't listen to people on the interwebs. That's all I'm going to say. Um, please be careful where you get your information. We take great care in what we do. Anything that we put on our website, anything that we say, it's usually, I mean, unless Blizzard has said it, we don't repeat it. So we don't go based off hearsay and what so-and-so saw in PTR. We go based off what the pros are telling us they see wowheads our source as far as data mine stuff but yeah just don't just just don't so that's all i had for bell's bites um lichen yes do we have lore we do and yes. i'm not going to go really <clears throat> in depth onto the uh <clears throat> the subject on the show i have a big write-up coming up on the uh, podcast daily uh we're going to be putting the big full write-up on the orcs and the ogres and it, it's it's an interesting history that the orcs have. Um, you know, everybody sees them as the as the big green skin brutes that. And we're talking about the quote unquote green skins, the the ones that came from the outland, the ones that came from the broken world, and were corrupted by the fell. Um, you know, and and it's interesting to look out on them, see how you know how people who have never played an orc, compared to those who swear by them, look at that whole race. Um, outsiders look at them as like brutal, you know. Um, Neanderthals, basically, you know, they're just dumb brutes. But really, if you look into their culture, if you look into their history, um, it's quite it's quite interesting to see how how intelligent and how far advanced, um, both you know, culturally and technology, this 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 uh, group of uh, uh, of beings is. Um, you know, we look back on on Draenor when it be, you know be, when the Eridar came on there, when the Draenei first landed there. They were actually very good friends with the orcs. Um, their daily lives intermingled all the time. They helped the Jernai ogres or Jernai refugees get set up on Draenor. Um, they traded with them. They shared technology. And it wasn't up until the corruption of the fell magic that they really um, began to separate and began to have this warring factions between each other. 
they were a very they are a very troubled past as well. Um, first being enslaved by the ogres, breaking that chain of the ogres, and then are enslaved by the humans when they're when they're coming after the second war. You know, you got Thrall that uh, you know was the name itself means uh, slave in English. You know, we have them breaking the chains of the human enslavement as well, just to um, I'm not the I'm sorry the ogre to the to the fells enslavement. They break that 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 enslavement with the fell uh, demons and they go right into human enslavement. So it's neat to see their history. And what's really impressive is that there's really like six big points with the with the orc culture. Um, they're concerned more with survival over any type of artistic achievements. Um, they revere their elderly, uh, honor their ancestors. That, that is a big part of their culture. Um, they don't apologize for any actions, both past and present, and they don't require their, their adversaries to do the same. They will not ask <laughs> you to apologize for what you have done, but they will not apologize. They will never apologize for what Garrosh did. That's like yeah. Godfather That's good, because I won't right, apologize right. for anything I've ever done. You're never going to get a sorry out of me. Right. <laughs> yeah, and it was Garrosh. I mean, even though they all knew it was wrong, they will not say, "Hey, I'm sorry for what he done." Right. You know, because that's just not how that, that's not how they roll. That's not how they they, they they react to things. Their values they they value valor over anything else. You know, their main their the biggest thing for an orc is to die on the battlefield with their axe in their hand. Um, not as a warring faction as much as this is where I'm supposed to be. If I'm fighting for what the orcs believe in and I die for what the orcs believe in, um, there are songs that are They're written patriots. about them. They're Absolutely. 100%. How can you fight against a race like that? Like That's incredible. They're scary anyway. Humans, I wouldn't yeah. want to... I, if I was Rin, I would run for the hills because I'm not equipped mm -hmm. to deal with those muscles. I'm just throwing that out there, but I, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, so I, I, have a, I have a question. Does the... The Draenei, when they came down, I know that I heard somewhere on YouTube that the ones that look really weird, the Naru, the, the ugly-looking small ones, those are actually Draenei, but they changed. What happened you're, there? You're talking about the outside groups, the, the ones that have – they have basically been corrupted by fell magic as well. That's um, my question. Was there inbreeding yeah, they, happening? No, that was, that's not a thing? No, it, it's pretty much they, – they're – they're, Does that happen in WoW at all? Is there ever any inbreeding it, situations? Oh I just, yeah, <laughs> there's been a couple close family relationships, but you know that's a whole different that's a whole different. Uh, it's not that kind of podcast. Not that kind of podcast. Right. It could be though. Right. Uh, kissing cousins. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, with, with they um, those are part of the Jedi. They were Jedi at one point, but as they got more and more corrupted, their appearance have changed. Um, the orcs, though, the orcs have done the same thing. I mean, they have we have what we've seen pale orcs that are now in Draenor. Um, you can actually get a ghost fish that you can pick up out of drain or mining or fishing in your mines, that little water spot down there. And if you eat them, you turn into a pale orc and he looks like uh what's the guy that says my precious. Um, oh, uh, golem eagle. Yeah. They look like Smeagol, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that, you know, and these are corrupted. Um, these are void corrupted orcs. And they're small and they're lanky and and you know isn't, they have such a huge isn't that, that the well. night what are they what's like what are they called the Tectus fight night crawlers yeah it's yeah. the same okay. it's exactly what that is you know they are void corrupted because I mean you gotta understand too we keep looking at fell energies and fell magic with the orcs as we see them through the burning crusade but remember they really they haven't been corrupted but there still had been corruption going on with their with their lives without. You know, the, the, the works of uh, Kill Jaden and, and Sargeras and, and Archimon, they were more corrupted by the void. And a lot of their, a lot of their uh, mages, a lot of their uh, – they, they hate arcane energy. They don't want to get into that. Um, they won't shun against them, though. But the ones that, that we see in Draenor are working with the void. They're getting to that fell energy and that fell magic, but they're not quite tapping into that. Um, so they're very intelligent beings. Um, they're a shamanistic group. You know, they they like they they worked with the elements very closely, and it wasn't. And they lost that when they turned towards uh, warlocks and turned towards the, the demons, and the the uh, the elements would not even talk to the shamans. And the first person that a shaman came back to the orc culture was Thrall. They saw the goodness in his heart. They saw the strength that he had. And how he wanted to free his people. And it was the elements that reached out to Thrall and said, here, 
you know, we have a long history together. Let's start working together once again. And it wasn't until Thrall came out and started becoming a leader that the other, the uh, elements actually reached back out to them. They were they were pissed at Gul'dan and Ner'zhul for you know turning their backs on them. And instead of going with a work with together um, magic, they went with let's enslave what we can and force them against our own wills. So the elements have a very close relationship with them. And then, like I said, it was a couple of thousand years before, you know, for all can stand there and say, Hey, or I'm sorry, 30 years or rather that they can say, say, look, I, I can now work with these, uh, the elements again. And that, that even drives you into why he was so mad at Jane at the end of the tides of war, because they, you know, where he became the earth warden with the aspects and, and Jaina standing there and enslaving these water elementals and making them, he was going to drown Orgrimmar. Sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the book. But he, she was going to drown Orgrimmar and all these elementals. And it physically pained him. You know, so you can see that, that, that connection they have back with the elements again. But I will have a huge write-up on this. And I have been working on it day and night for about two weeks now. And I really want to get into it because I think the orc culture... Um, because it's such a history with Warcraft itself, I mean, it goes back to the original Warcraft game, you know, Orcs and Humans. The Orc culture is so far in depth into the game that it touches every aspect, both Horde and Alliance. And it'll be neat. Um, you know, there's times where the humans worked hand in hand with the Orcs. And that was right before yeah. World of Warcraft came out. They worked together so well together, you know, and, and it wasn't until. You know, the burning blade turned on, turned back and started causing a dissension between the two groups. So they're not a a warmongering group like we we expected them to be. And like a lot of people see the orcs and they go, okay, oh, I can see they want to you know death and victory. You know, that's that's not the type of group they are. They will do that, and they are a force to be reckoned with. But they would rather have that peace. They would rather have that, you know, that that period of placidity where they're not going to be fighting all the time. So their biggest, you know, their biggest honor is to die on a battlefield. So it's it's a big, di- you know, uh, love hate relationship. Exactly, it's a love hate relationship between what they want to do. So you'll see it'll be up on PwnCastDailyQuest.com. I should have that up here within the next two days. Um, I have a couple more things that I just want to make sure I hit on to make sure that it, it is complete before I put it up. There. Nice, very nice. That's awesome. We've, you know, we've. Is there? Is there other warlocks be- with Gul'dan? Is there what do you mean? is there other orc warlocks with with Gul'dan? In the, the current moment? timeline? Yeah, current timeline. No, because you have to understand the warlocks tap into that fell energy. So they he get- tapped in. So there's no other ones that before him were tapping into it because. Right. Okay. And Gul'dan, you can understand too. Gul'dan is not corrupted by drinking the blood of Manoroth. He started that 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 green skin. He started looking right. that way because the fell energies have have purely corrupted. They him. consumed it him. Was, right. It wasn't no. like he drank the blood. Like what the original timeline shows with the green orcs is that they drank the blood. No, no, no. He actually got consumed. He got corrupted by the energy itself. He bathed in it by practicing right. that. By practicing the energy, it took over. Yeah, and he he threw away all the shamanistic views that he held. He threw that away and says, you know what? Um, screw you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna force these demons to do. And what you I know, want. it's funny. There's always a correlation between the bad guy and the really really evil bad guy that's behind the scenes. They always look hunched over. They always look old. They always look very rough. And I know that it's because being evil takes a lot of work. There's a lot of yeah. minions that you have to put in place, and there's a lot of shady backdoor deals that are going on in order for you to take over the world. But if you notice all the villains in history, it, from game to TV, they're always like, you never really find a really handsome, like, villain. Well, you, know? well, you got to remember, too, that hate takes, like, what, double or Agreed. triple the energy than it Agreed. does the They're always, like, shriveled up normal. and old and crotchety, and mm-hmm. they have to have minions do their work, or they have to be really powerful magic-wise, because, I mean, if yeah. me and Gul'dan were to go toe-to-toe in a fist fight, I'd, obviously I'd win, but I mean... You'd probably scratch it, be like, uh, <laughs> But I mean, well, look at, you know... Look at Sardris. I mean, when you see Sardris before he was turned, you know, by by the uh, by the, the 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 legion, he was this big, handsome guy, you know, dark hair, dark skin, carried a big sword. And now, when you see him, he's been corrupted so much that he's nothing but just energy. He's that 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 red fire, pure energy that he has right now. And, and you're right, you know, he he, you can see that even that transformation. And Boldan was the same way. 
it was a good looking orc until he started getting hunched over and oh, yeah, you know started right. started basically deteriorating from the inside out. A lot of girls were like, That's "Oh my true. god, Garrosh is so hot," and I'm like, "No, no, no, it's not really." His, still... his face reminded me of something, but I couldn't. The whole haircut he had and the the way he they did his beard, I, it reminded me of a couple actors, but. I know I'm gonna this make it reminded me of something like that. I'm gonna make all the horde mad at me. I still think Garrus was a wuss with baby or well, with daddy he, issues. I mean he was. <laughs> but you know, yeah. realizing the deeper meaning I mean we could talk about Garrus all day in the deeper meanings, but You did this to I, me. You know, the the cutscene <laughs> the cutscene that we had to deal with between him and Thrall, you really, really got to see the pain on his face and you really realized that it it was that that drove him. It wasn't necessarily his need to dominate, which that's in all Horde, I think. I think that's just an underlying of who Horde is, and I don't mean this as an insulting manner. I just think the underlying of all Horde is to dominate because they they feel that superiority because they're rough and they're rav they're savage and not like Indian savage or whatever you want to call it, but like they're they're real rough around the edges or whatever the case what whatever right. you want to call it. But I think I think that that deep seated Daddy issue combined with he thought he had a love there with Thrall and he felt Thrall abandoned him. Like, that really, really drove him. Mm -hmm. Emotions with men, that will make you kill people. Men don't know how to handle emotion on a deeper level. I'm not insulting men, so before everybody gets on their soap... No, I'm talking about all the listeners. Before you men get on your soapbox and start sending me nasty emails, I'm not saying that you guys don't know how to be emotional, but you really don't. You Men don't know how to process that on a, process that on a deeper level. So I think he and, flipped out because he didn't know how to be oh, hurt yeah. and angry or scared or or daddy doesn't love me. He totally was like, I'm gonna kill everything until I don't feel this way. I really think that's well. It. Didn't didn't and he can... have a didn't he have an initial fight with uh, with uh, Thrall prior to the whole thing? No. Are you talking about no? when okay. Thrall fought him and got thrown around and made us made us do his yeah. dirty work while he stood up at yeah. the top? Yeah. See, when, yeah. When when your leader goes to fight you like that, you lose all respect for anybody at that point. I mean, well, you're just, the thing with, now you have no ally. The thing with Garrosh, though, is that, you know, and, and this really goes back to who the or what the orcs are all about. They will fight. If they believe what they believe in, and they 100% believe that this is the only way to go, they will do it until their death. And there yeah, is nothing that they're going to change. I would right. kill for freedom. Nazgrim. I would kill for freedom. So, just saying. When yeah, Garrus yeah. took over the Horde and he said, okay, I want the Horde to weigh back. And if we look at what the, 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 the warlords are now and what their culture is, what we're experiencing in Draenor, I can see why he wanted to go back to that, you know, where we are powerful. We are, you know, a force to be reckoned with. And he fought tooth and nail for that. And then when Thrall turned around and gave him the leadership, the option. Thrall turned his back. And, yeah, I mean, you're looking at somebody who we find – if you remember when we find him in Outlands – he was a little wimp standing there crying. And then we, we walked him through the steps to find out what his dad really did. Yes, his father really got us to – got, got yeah. them to be incorrupted originally, but he knew what he did was wrong, and he's the one that killed Manoroth. He's the one that downed that demon and said, I will not have my people be a slave again. And, and you know, so we built him up like that, and he looks to Thrall, and Thrall's telling him these stories, and he's working with him. And then all of a sudden, the only person that you were able to look up to a father that you respected – Gives you everything and walks away, and does not help you when he asked for help. When he and disappears. Thrall, yeah, wanted Thrall Dis to come back and help. He's gone. I'm sorry. The elements are more important than my own people. Is what he is. What how Garrosh took it. So yeah, you could see how this just this rage would build up in him. And knowing the history of the orcs, um, there was nothing that was going to stop him. He was never, ever going right. to be able to be rehabilitated. There was no way he was going to go back into, the, into his culture, into his clan, and stand there and say what I did was wrong because they will not Whenever apologize. Whenever we talk about Garrosh, it's always like an hour-long conversation. Garrosh is one of the people <laughs> that you could literally have so many different opinions on what you feel he's about. I mean, he, we literally get really, really, really in depth. I just like what Tara Zeus said, man. Tara Zeus, uh, like, your dad, your dad messed with powers beyond, and look where he is. I was like, ah! Valid. Valid. <laughs> Valid. This is Hashtag. now the fourth expansion that we have dealt with, Garrosh. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think Blizzard knows what the next expansions are, this goes to prove it. We started at BC from Garrosh, and yep. we have walked, and everything that has happened in BC, everything happens in Northrend, through the Cataclysm, through Pandaria, has led us to where we're at right now. They knew we were coming back here four expansions ago. When they wrote BC and started putting that <laughs> Garrosh line, they knew exactly where they wanted him. And people are saying, oh, well, they jumped the gun and they wanted to to change everything with, with, 
warlords of Draenor and change the history. No, they have known since. I'm pretty sure. That this is I'm pretty sure that's pretty. That's a pretty valid statement. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've just been sitting here thinking the entire time. Whenever we were talking about the horde of the rough and tough, you know, then I was like, then you have blood elves, and they're like the scene kids. Agreed. Like. <laughs> like <"Stop it." laughs> They're, they're the they're the they're the hipsters that are like love each other. Let's like, not fight. Let's just make like love. Good for this. They're the ones in those yeah. weird rooms in the Black Temple that are having orgies with all them broads in there and the the maids with the with the, the the stuff that the hands of they got trays mm-hmm. of drinks and pillows on the wow. ground. Yeah. I'm just walking through every single class out there. Um, we start with the Draenei because they are the oldest class that World of Warcraft has dealt with. Um, whether or not we've seen them until Barney Crusade, but they've really, <clears> with the <throat> timeline, Orcs and Ogres are next. When I start working through, when I get to the Blood Elves, you will look at the Blood Elves in a totally different manner. And, and it is their history that they've had coming, you know, coming from all the way back when, when the, the Night Elves and the, and the Blood Elves were, were actually one family and where the split happened and where that all changed, uh, you'll look at the Blood Elves in a totally different manner going, no, they're not this... You know this real light, light in the let's say light in the shoes group. No, they're a heavy-handed uh, group to be feared as well. Oh yeah, no, I know. Uh, just talking about well, uh, <laughs> we're pretty ex- <laughs> hipster douchebags. Right? Uh, we're pretty excited for some of the lore stuff coming out. We um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. We pretty much covered everything that needed to be covered. Um, Fryza didn't do enough PvP to really form a good segment, but hopefully he'll have some good stuff for you next week. Now that he's bringing in, we brought in some new people for him to boss around and yell at them. Uh, so, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, as usual, we always love having you here. For everybody that's been to the site, for those of you that are new that went to the site and that's how you've heard about us and you're a first time watcher, we hope you become a forever watcher and a forever listener. Not a creepy standing in your lawn watcher, but just your general average everyday watcher. Some people like that. You have to be really specific with people because, I mean, he... Oh, yeah, uh, staring at him. Every once in a while, every once in a while. You know, his stream, he's got quite the the following of stalkers, um, I've noticed. He's he's got, um, yeah. Except our buddy Walker... Walker loves everything about Pwncast. He watches every episode. He comments on every post. He literally is probably our number one fan. We love Walker so much. And he tries to hide I, I, hide a different name, but I always know who he is. I, I actually play with him in Smite every once in a while. Oh, snap. Nice. That's cool. So we're going to wrap that up. Uh, thank you guys for joining us every week. We appreciate it. Pwncast, dailyquest.com. We'll give you all the weekly stuff when we're not doing the show. If you have any questions, you have anything you'd like written about in depth, any suggestions that you have, anything you want to say, make sure that you comment. If you're watching on YouTube, we like YouTube comments, like the video. Um, and that's pretty much it. You can get a hold of uh, the cast members at infoponcast.net. You can go to facebook.com slash pwncast. I don't know what the hell that is, uh, Fryza. I, <laughs> <laughs> you, that's his new prism? Y- you can <laughs> get... <laughs> Grabs it and throws it. You, <laughs> you can get a hold of Fryza by going to facebook.com slash pwncast uh, and just inboxing uh, attention Fryza because he doesn't know how to check his email. You can get a hold of Lycan at Lycan. You can mail me in the game. If you want to get a call, then mail me through the game. And seriously, I will answer They have back to be on Arjun with... Dawn to mail you, smart guy. No. Yes. No? No. Could be I can yeah. never get that crap to work. Argent it never Dawn. worked for me. You, you do Fryza slash Argent Don, uh, you're you a loser, have, and I'll get it. You guys have always told me that it's never worked for me. Um, I only respond to negativity, gotcha. so if you're going to mail me, it must be negative. Lycan is, at, is Lycan at pwncast.net. Hots is at hotsforshots at pwncast.net. He also has his own stream, Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash hotsforshots. He has his uh, battle tag ID is hot seventeen ninety six. There you go. So you go there you go. He knows that better than well, I do. I just uh, put that out there. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we are going to get on out of here. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day to I all of you. Get I gotta get the hell out of here because these guys are making me crazy. Uh, I'm just V day V. Wait, no, I can't do that. <laughs> no. That's why he's fine, single, fine. ladies and gentlemen. That's why he's single. He can't even do the V. You hear that first? I can't on do podcast. the V. <laughs> All right. No, it's Alan. All right. Day. We're getting out of here. Bye. Bye. No, you gotta make sure you gotta say it as Alentine's Day. Alentine's Day. Alentine's Day. Because you ain't getting the V and you ain't giving the D. That's pretty accurate. Oh, <laughs> I saw that. I saw I that thing where uh, Cody sent that message.
message, and I literally almost fell off the toilet with someone. You're just being serious. <laughs> oh my god, I saw that thing that he, that some, someone put the side above the D. What was that? Oh, oh uh, she wants the, in the room of D. My roommate's <laughs> old. Uh, my, my roommate's old. <laughs>